G'day everyone, this is Jill, also known as Jeannie Oz, in Sydney, Australia with another Hangout on Air. As the biggest show on the Australian Junior calendar is looming, I thought it would be good to have a chat about the 14th Australasian Congress on Genealogy and Heraldry, or as it's known in family history circles, Congress or AFO Congress. Uh, now a little bit of housekeeping as uh, we normally have. I had technical difficulties last time. I had a hangout, so please if I drop off, just keep talking amongst yourselves. Hopefully <laughs> I'll uh, be able to get back on. I've already lost the internet a couple of times tonight here at home. Mm. Now um, I've just got a screen share. I'll give you my beautiful face. Yep, there I am back again. Um, we've got on the panel um, a couple of presenters. We've got first timers. Yes, Les. Uh, yeah, I think Les is a first timer. We've got yes, and Fran's probably a first timer. So we've got a range of people on the panel. People who may have questions. People who hopefully can contribute to some of our conversation. Um, I should have prepared some slides, but I was playing with my um, technology and making sure everything was working. So I haven't prepared any slides for tonight. But I hope Pauline and uh, the list I created in an email with Pauline will keep me on track. Um, so let's quickly go to the panel and see who we've got on tonight. Now. If you can just do a short introduction to yourself, tell us if you're going to Congress, in what capacity, and if you're an old hand or a first timer, Fran. Hi, I'm unmute. Good. Good. Um, I'm a first timer, obviously, and I'm what I call a hanger on. <laughs> I'm um, going to be hanging on to all the people that have been before. I find that's the most effective way to get around and learn things. So I'm really quite excited because I'm a conference junkie. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a bit that way too. You did a wonderful blog post. I don't know if it was last night or this morning, but I think I caught it this morning. So I'm going to get you to talk through your blog post a bit later. Now, the next okay. person on our panel is Jenny. Yes, you... right, unmute now. Good. Yes. Uh, well, it's the second Congress that I'm going to. I went to uh, Adelaide three years ago, and this time I'm actually a speaker and I'll be giving three different talks. Plus, I'll be attendee, uh, attending other people's talks as well. Okay, we'll come back and you can tell us a bit about your talks later. Young Les. Uh, yes, I'm a. I'm, sorry, I'm I'm a first timer for uh, the family conference. Um, I'm very excited. I'll be attending. Uh, I'll be flying down to Canberra on Thursday afternoon and staying till the end of Monday. I'm really looking forward to the ceremony on Thursday night at the War Memorial, uh, the dinner, and uh, the visit to the National Library and the National Archives. I'm excited. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Pauline, are you excited? Have you got sound? <coughs> have I got sound, Jill? Yes, Can you, you hear me? Excellent. Um, yes, I'm excited. Uh, it's going to be fun. This will be my fourth conference and um, as you know, I'm speaking. So uh, I'm just finishing off my slide presentation and then I'll be on to all the things I want to do while I'm researching. All right, you do have another role, Pauline. What's your other role? Oh, I'm one of the three official bloggers, along with you and Shauna Hicks. Okay, so we've good. we've interviewed lots of speakers, have we not? Have we not? We certainly have. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll go to me now. My name's Jill, and I'm an official Congress blogger. Um, I'm not presenting because I didn't. Um, managed to put in any proposals, but I was lucky enough to be anointed well, a couple of weeks ago um, to a position on the stage. That's really exciting. I'm moderating the very last session, um, which is a panel session with uh, Josh Taylor and Carol Riley and David Holman. He's from the UK. Um, so I'm rather excited about that. 
that I get to um, stand up there and probably not have to do as much work as people like Jenny and Pauline. Um, so there you have it. Um, now, young Fran, have you got any questions as a first timer? Is there? I know you've been to conferences that are much bigger than um, not Ruth's deck. Whoops, put our hat on um, <laughs> for Congress. Have you got any questions? Anything? that you want to know particularly about Congress? Oh, yes, questions that you won't find online. I have got one. Yeah. One of the things they're going to have is actually like, I don't know if it's an AGM or a meeting of the AFFHO. And yes. I just wonder, is that a thing that anybody can attend? Because I like to see how groups work together in that and yeah. or it's just the, the in people that get to go. Well, do you know, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if Jenny knows. I don't know if it's just four, and Jenny might jump in if she knows. Um, Pauline might know because she's been to four congresses. Um, I don't know if it's for, like, the secretaries, presidents, etc., of people who are mem members of AFO because societies can be members of AFOs or if people can go along as observers. Jenny, can you shed any light on that? I can shed light on it from a point of view of the New South Wales and ACT version of the yeah. AFO conference, whereby they would like a delegate from each member society to attend and they actually send out um, paperwork beforehand saying who is going to be your nominated delegate, but other people can attend if they want to. Um, I have not seen any paperwork come out to our society, which is an affiliated society, okay. asking for a nominated delegate. My okay. guess is anybody can attend if they want to. Maybe The that's worst that can happen, Fran, if you try and knock on the door is that they say, sorry, go away. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if well, Colin's... I get that out, but I like to know when I'm coming and going, you know. Yeah. Probably won't have time anyway. Jill will have something on. Yeah. I wonder if Pauline knows, because she's sort of um, been involved in organising a very early uh, one. I haven't gone to the um, AGMs though, Jill. Oh, okay. I think you could probably go, Fran, if you're interested, but you may not be able to vote. I suspect that the voting would be down to official positions within each secret within each um, society that's a member orga member organisation within a AFO. So. Yeah. You could be an observer, but not a voter, is my guess. But I was just quickly trying to see the answer, but I didn't come up with it in the two seconds Jill gave me to Google. So. <laughs> you know, that was a question I had too, Fran. Um, I wasn't even aware of the meeting at the first congress I went to in Adelaide. Um, so now I'm aware of it because I had studied the program. So I don't know. Les, have you got any questions that are really, um, you know, Unanswered? Anything you'd particularly like to know? Um, not really. I mean, I, I'm not. I've only. I've probably only been to Canberra twice in my life, I think. But uh, uh, coming from uh, Brisbane, but um, uh, I, I've I've been through the program that they've got online and the the other various reading materials and what have you. And I think I've hopefully gleaned enough to uh, be able to stumble and blunder my way around. But um, I'm obviously hoping to pick a lot up on on the first morning and uh, you know just get the general vibe of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, I've got here. We might discuss, and I've got a few points um, on my other computer here that I'm looking at. Um, general conference goer goer hints. Well, Fran's a conference junkie, but we haven't uh, spoken to Jenny for a while. Jenny, general conference goer hints that can be applied at Congress. Well, don't oh, be shy. Someone's ringing Talk me. to people. Talk to people. Try and get to meet new people. Don't only stick with a little small handful of people you already know. Um, I might unlike... just stop you there just for a minute because I think what we need to do, Jenny and Jill and Pauline, is, and we can discuss this in a minute, what are we going to do to extend the hand of friendship to the wallflower so we don't have wallflowers? Anyhow, go on with your tips. Yeah, I was just saying, unlike some things, at least you know that anybody there has a common interest with you, so you should be able to 
even for people like me who do struggle to talk to strangers, you've got a common oh. ground of talking to people, so do so. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> I do. I'm a very shy, retiring person. Oh, well, so I, I was under there was lo <laughs> so lots I'm... of sceptical laughter there, Jenny. <laughs> yeah, I so agree. I I'm, I'm shy too. I hate cocktail parties, but I'm going to the Old War Memorial one. Now, um, have you got another hint for conference goers? Because you've been to some big conferences, Jenny. It's just totally immerse yourself as much as you can, do as much as you can, in, uh, experience as much as you can, go and talk to the people that have the stands there. There won't be 170 like there were at Roots Tech, um, but it'll be good and just get involved at every stage, have a drink with people afterwards or ha go out and find someone to have dinner with. Mm -hmm. Fran, as a conference junkie, Con conference tips that can be applied to roots. Um, to following conference. on from Jenny, the you've got to set yourself up with a little elevator pitch because when people say what do you do, if you have to go oh, whereas if you just say the few words that apply, they actually feel so much more welcome to you and then finish with a question. And the other thing is that with social media nowadays, if you like it, get involved. And so, like at my blogger conferences, we can actually trend on Twitter with the amount of tweeting and that we're doing. And that I really enjoyed that at Roots Tech. And it's the way if you start following people that are using the hashtags, then you have after conference contacts. Does right. that all make okay. sense? Yep. Sure does. I'm just inviting someone that um, oh, I notice is okay. online. So, Pauline. Have you got a couple of tips? I would reiterate what Jenny said, which is basically be open to talking to people. And I think it's it's an important thing for those of us who know each other through blogging to realise that other people don't. And so not just to hang out in the gang, which to an extent we are, but to if we see a wallflower, to go over and go, oh, hi, my name's Pauline. Where are you from? What's your research interest? Blah blah blah, and drag them along. And if they, you know, if they're really shy and they don't want to do anything, that's fine. That's their choice. But at least they don't have to feel like no one cares about them. So I think it's on both sides that we, you know, the person on the receiving end has to um, be open to the approach and have their elevator pitch ready. And those of us who are coming who have a, already have a gang of people who we know through blogging or hangouts or whatever that we actually are able to communicate with these people and if we see someone standing on their own to just go over and make them welcome. That's a good idea, yeah. I mean, we, uh, I'm like Jenny in that I'm a bit shy until I know you and then of course I'm not shy anymore. <laughs> and so I tend to Ditto. cling to the people, yeah, to the people I know but I've also been to conferences, I don't know if Fran has, um, where I've arrived on day one and on di day three or four I've gone away and I haven't made any connections. Um, you know, I'm just like a stranger in the room and, and I think we who've got our connections through social media need to really, yeah, extend the hand of friendship and, um, you know, make these people welcome so they'll come back to Sydney in 2018 if nothing else. Les, you're a first timer. Do you think that you're shy? What are you going to do to beat you? Uh, no. Uh, probably a bit like you, Jim. Um, I might seem a little bit shy at the start but um, once um, <clears throat> once uh, conversation begins, it's... Um, uh, I'm usually not backwards in coming forwards, and my mouth has been known to get me into trouble before. But I, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to you know. For me, part of the one of the big reasons for going to the conference uh, is to build real networks, and uh, you know, for for all of the, uh, particularly with some of the presenters and some of the other people who are uh, of uh, high esteem in the Australian genealogy community. Um, and the international, would, and the international community. I would love to build some uh, first, you know, face-to-face -face time, 
and uh, and establish some networking uh, connections there to take away for uh, hopefully a lifetime. That's your lifetime's probably longer than mine. I can see someone else there who's joined us. Sorry, Carmel, I didn't have you on the list of people who were were coming, so I just issued you an invitation. Now, initially, I got everyone to tell us: um, Are they a newbie at Congress? What roles are they? You know, have they got any roles at Congress? So, how about you? What's your status um, going to be at Congress? Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. I am. Oh, there's, of course, some there. Okay. Um, I'm coming to participate. And to participate. How do you think and you might participate? Um, I've chosen the sessions I'm going to, and um, I'll talk to everybody in morning teas and lunch times, and hopefully find some people to spend some evenings with as well and meet everybody that I don't know. The whole, I heard today that there are well over 500 people, so there will be plenty of people for you to meet. That's, that's good. Now, you've been to quite a few conferences in your day. I've asked everyone else if they got any general conference tips, conference goer tips that they suggest uh, would be useful for Congress. Have you got any particular tips? Unfortunately, you haven't heard what everyone else said. Yes, I have because I was watching. Oh, you have. <laughs> okay. um, yes, indeed. Uh, certainly visit all the stands. I think if um, people are good enough to come along and support conferences, that conference goers should actually make an effort to go around and visit the those who support us. So I always try to do that, and you know I usually try to do two or three in every break in between things and um, keep my finger on the pulse that way. Um, no, um, I guess I'd say um, don't stand up and take photos in the middle of a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> no, We've already had that discussion online. We've had that discussion online, yes. <laughs> All right. Now, I've got a couple of tips. I didn't give myself a turn. Um, wear comfortable shoes, um, dress in layers, um, have some small change in your purse. You never know what you might need some money for. Um, yeah, they're just general. Have some peppermints. I always think they're handy. You've no idea how many times I've nearly been bowled over by people's halitosis. Um, so think of others. Have some peppermints in your bag, and if your mouth's a little bit dry, pop a peppermint. Um, has anyone else got anything further they'd like to add? to the tips for conference goes before we go on to our next point? I yep. have a little, yep. yes. Paul. Go for I'll it, go on. friend. Yep. Um, basically, our pro blogger conferences, um, Darren always tells us to have key takeaways. So say you attend mm -hmm. a particular meeting or um, a gen one of those general things they have at the beginning, figure out what your key thing was and try and turn it into something actionable. So. I don't know, say I went to a talk at Roots Tech about um, understanding language and writing, so I should have turned it into I'm going to read a book or I'm going to find out about that or I'm going to go through all my old documents and try and read them or to actually create something and write it down at the time so you don't forget and lose value from actually going. So that's my other tip. Good, Good. all right. I just thought of another one. Um, I know Jenny's done this, I know Fran's done this, I know Pauline's done this. Um, you've still got time to order yourself some business type cards, contact cards, um, through Vistaprint. It's really handy because you'll meet lots of people. Um, if you've got a, a little business card that you can hand out to people that's got your details on, what is, as much as you want to share, you can even have the names you're researching on the card. Um, you can knock some off up on your printer um, if, if you wish, but it's a, a really good idea. Do you think so, Jenny? Yep, definitely. Um, yep. We've all met somebody and then struggled to find a scrap of paper to scrawl down their details and then lost that said scrap of paper later. If it's a business card, you tend to make sure you don't lose it. And I've got big files of those from people that I've met over the years at various events. Mm. 
yeah, no, that's that's just another thought. Now, <coughs> Pauline's got a good idea. Uh, we've all got different interests. I'm a member of, you know, so many societies and whatnot, and I've got my social media interests. Jenny's a member of different societies, and she's got. Um, her interests. She's a professional genealogist. I'm just a granny who, you know, dabbles. Um, what sort of? How are you? Seeing as your face is there, Jenny, how are you going to link up? Have you got any tips for linking up with people with shared interests? I mean, we've got our. We're going to have our Jenny a blogger bead, so that's going to be easy. I wish I did. <laughs> Okay. That's not something that I've ever found so easy. I have yeah. often gone and spoken additionally to a speaker after they've given a talk when it's been a, a topic of particular interest of mine. So in other words, make myself known to them. But mm -hmm. other than that, I'm not very good at making that contact or link, making those social networks. I know. I don't know if Pauline's got her things as a surprise, but... Um how are you going to meet up with some people, you know, similar interests, Pauline? Well, I've got two things going, Jill. One, I've got a couple of small badges, which I don't think work of, has worked as well as I hoped. Plus, I've ordered some Queenslander ribbons, which I'm hoping get here in time. Oh, and okay. you notice I say Queenslander and they're maroon with silver. So anyone who wants the maroon and silver Queenslander ribbon, see Pauline. Uh, the rest of you blues can just all go away and um, there's no friends when it comes to this. And I've also ordered some um, genealogists for families ribbons so that um, we can add them to our name tags, those of us who are in GFF, so that we can promote Kiva, which I think is important. Well, it's important to me anyway. Um, there are a couple of things and, you know, sometimes serendipity plays a part. I have to say one of the nicest people I met at Roots Tech, which is no insult to those I know well, um, was a woman I happened to meet and have a coffee with purely because the library was open an hour later than we anticipated. We had a really nice coffee at JB's, lovely lady, very intelligent, we're friends on Facebook and that was such a pleasure and it was just a pleasure. It wasn't about networking per se, it was about making a connection and we made that purely by chance. So go with the serendipity as well. It, sometimes it works. Yeah. They're my and, pearls and of wisdom for what they're worth. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just unfortunately, I don't know much about the organisation of Congress. I'm hoping that they have some whiteboards um, where we can put notices and say, you know, I use XYZ software. Is there anyone else who wants to talk about it? Um, you know, let's meet up. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping there's a board for that. I know there has been at um, previous con conferences, but I, I hope I would they have contact, some sort of thinking. I would contact yep. Kerry Gray and check with her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to put it to Kerry because it's a bit variable and sometimes it only happens on day two or day three. Day three, um, yeah. I'm you know, so going. maybe maybe add um, your software interest to the research interest. So instead of putting a name, Put family right, historian, yeah. for example. That's just yeah. a thought. I don't know. No, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's because I'm ignorant of, of the, um, you know, how, it, how it, it's going to happen. So each I might time is alone. variable, Jill. I think hmm? each time is complete. Each each congress is different. Right. So I don't it think you can kind of extrapolate. Yeah. yeah, but we as bloggers might be able to get it out there if I get an answer from Kerry because I think it's really good to be able to meet up with, you know, like if we had um, interest in East Clare or something like that, Pauline, it would be good to, um, you know, meet up with uh, other people who've got similar interests. All right. And I'd like to meet people who are members of societies, overseas societies that I'm, I'm, um, I've joined up just to see who they are, etc. And I don't know of any, except for our um, Kiva genealogists for families, I don't know of any other outside the conference um, functions that have been organised. So um, hopefully they'll happen on an ad hoc basis anyway. Now, uh, we've talked about making Congress a memorable experience for newbies um, and 
we're all going to um, extend the hand of friendship, even though we're shy. Um, Canberra has got many research repositories. Um, who would like to tell us about one that they've visited and that they've found useful and give us any tips? I've got a tip if you're going to the National Library, because it's one of those places where you can't, there's a certain size handbag you can take in. Um, otherwise, you've got to put your stuff in a clear plastic bag or, you know, have. So, my, my tip is um, wear something with pockets so that you can stuff things in your pockets, like your pencil, your mobile phone, your camera, all that sort of stuff. Um, Carmel, have you got any suggestions for repositories in Canberra? Are you familiar with any of them? Because you're a fairly new researcher in family history. Uh, I did live in Canberra for nine ah, years, but well, at that stage I, I was not at all interested in family history. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> and it's now quite a long time ago. So even though I visited the National Library in another context or several different contexts, um, I can't say that um, I have any hints about searching family history there. No, I really don't know. Right, yeah. But um, as... Okay, that's all right. I, I won't put words into people's mouths. Fran, have you done any research in Canberra and can you suggest any repositories that may be useful and any tips for prior to visiting? Uh, I've only ever been there once and it was one of those cold days when you wish that you didn't. Mm. So, um, but I think it is important to find out if you're allowed pens or pencils, what you can take in, what you can't. If you're allowed to take photos, so for example in the archives in New Zealand you're allowed to take photos but you have to use pencils and they get quite unhappy if they see you using a pen and you also have to have your reader card. I don't know, I've got a library card from the um, library, National Library here, but I don't know about the archives if you have a separate yes, reader card for that. you do, yes. It, they're, they're quite strict with their regulations and you do have to use pencil and put all your stuff in a locker um, and you have to have a reader's card for them. And it's you can order stuff in ahead of time, the same as with the National Library. So it's really good to go onto the catalogues um, of the National Library and do searches on the National Archives and identify those things, the books at the library or online um, databases you want access to or files from the National Archives because sometimes they have to be brought in and it's really nice if you can get down there. I forget what the maximum is you can order. Um, and get down and get there and go in and you know you've got your files ready to go so yeah yeah that's, that's what I do that's... when I'm going to New Zealand yep well the same thing holds mm -hmm. there Jenny you are in Sydney and you've been down to Canberra a few times I was going to make that point about pre-ordering uh, the National Library um, last time I went down no longer has very much available on open access almost everything has to be ordered up and it can take, I think, 45 minutes or something. So if you don't have the library card, then you've got to start ordering when you get there. But if you've got your library card, which most of us do, um, pre-order what you want so that you're not wasting time. That said, the other thing that I thought was allocate time for yourself at each of the repositories, the National Library, the National Archives, to look at their displays. Don't only go in there to do your research because they have some great things. And of course, the War Memorial, which is another one I think you have to order in advance, have just recently reopened their First World War uh, galleries. Uh, when I was down there, when was that? Year before last, 2013, the First World War galleries were closed, but they're now reopened, and I'm really looking forward to seeing those. Mm -hmm. And how about the research library there? People might not be aware of that. I haven't used it before. Oh, I'm oh. hoping to use it this time. It'll be the first time. <laughs> Hopefully I get time to follow my own advice and order in advance what I want to see. <laughs> but life's been busy yeah. at the moment. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's probably 10 years since I've used the library at the War Memorial. That's why I'm asking other people for suggestions. But they were very helpful when I went... Um, looking for unit histories um, for my father in, in World War II. Um, and 
what I wanted but was But if you haven't you know, gone before, there. No. Um, for our visitors who are further afield, do, sp hmm. do allocate time, look at it. Um, it was interesting having the First World War uh, galleries closed uh, in 2013 because very often I start at World War One, and I get to a certain point and I'm kind of overwhelmed with emotion and don't keep going. This time actually or that time I saw galleries that I hadn't seen before because I sort of started halfway through True. their process. It was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. It's just yeah. an incredible place. Right. Now I'm going to jump across to Liz because oh, Liz, have you you haven't been to Canberra much, you said. No, I haven't. No. But um Okay. No, I'm pulling Yeah, Pauline's a little bit of a research junkie. Um, <laughs> so she might have some other repositories that she might suggest. I've got a couple here I'm sort of thinking okay. of. Pauline? A Tips or repositories? Things. I've been to the National Library and the War Memorial many times um, back in the dark ages when photos were printed out on thermal paper, so it tells you how long ago that was, um, totally the pre-digital era. I think I would, at the War Memorial, apart from seeing the dioramas, I would look at the the um, bookshop because the bookshop has got stuff that's really difficult to find anywhere else. Don't avoid the bookshop, it's great. Um, and take the time to walk past the honour boards up on the that sort of first mm. floor and see, find the names, get your poppies. They're a pain in the neck to get them actually in the slots because for some reason they don't seem to work very well. Um, so that's the War Memorial. The National Library I had great success one of the last times I was there uh, with their sound recordings. So just check sound recordings whether there's anything for the areas of interest that you have or the people that you have. Uh, and don't forget, I'm pretty sure that you need your card to do your photocopying, which means I need to find my card. So that's another challenge. The two places I'd suggest that I haven't actually been, well, I haven't been to the National sound and film archive which has got some interesting things but depending on what you're looking for that's a good place to go. Um, I didn't have much joy at the National Archives because I was looking for uh, someone who was involved in the construction of Canberra and that didn't work very well so I'm quite interested in the ACT archives and I may well go out to Hagsog as well to see what they've got in the way of indexes that may be more now specific. Tell us what Hagsog is, Pauline, please. Okay, the heraldry and there, yeah, Jill, did you have to do that? Um, yeah, heraldry just say and, society. and society of genealogy. It's basically the genealogical society in Canberra, which has heraldry in the front, and I can't think what the rest of the acronym is, but they are the people and who are organising the conference. Thank you. Well, yep. I knew genealogical, Jill. It was the bit, in, um, Jenny. It was the bit in the middle that I was struggling with. And um, so yes, it's their heraldry genealogical society in Canberra, and so they will have archives to do with the um, indexes to do with the ACT. So I have a guy who was heavily involved um, with the Caledonian Society in its very early days, and who was part of the construction of Canberra. So I'm quite interested in maybe pursuing something a bit lateral. So there are a couple of places that are a bit off the wall. Mm -hmm. um, can I comment on one I've of those places? Yeah. Yep, Jill, on. can I just comment on one of those things? Yeah. The uh, National Film and Sound Archive. Wonderful visitor gallery, but when I went there uh, with some real information to offer them, they were they weren't welcoming and they also were protective of any information they have. Uh, the background is that two years before television happened in Australia, was ever first broadcast in Australia, my father was involved in some test broadcasts of the uh, Queen's visit in 1954. Oh, okay. He has the only photographs that he's aware of, of those test transmissions. That's historically significant. They were a little bit iffy and even though they looked up a couple of things and found a few names, they didn't want to give me any of the information that they had on those names. Consequently, I kind of feel like some other 
archive that is more open to the public would be oh, a they more appropriate place for. And they may have. The well, I hope they have because they were they were very much protective of this is ours and you have to write for permission to look at anything. Oh, and I thought, well, if that's their attitude, I'm not yeah. donating to them. Yeah. You well, would have been I've within their another. closure period, though. So, Jenny, yeah. that's, that may have been to do with the closure period as much as anything if it's 1970s. Yeah. But anyway. 1950s. Oh, anyway, I've got another archive. 1954. Oh, 54. That Carmel probably visited in her professional life, um, the Louise archives. Carmel, did you visit there at all when you were in Canberra? Or did your time in Canberra predate the, the Lou Reeves? Um, no, I, I didn't go there. I was just in the middle of typing a comment though about the National Capital Commission. Okay. Um, well, they tell us have about a, um, oh. They used to have, and I don't know if it's still there, I haven't looked it up, but I just thought when you were talking about people involved in the construction of Canberra, it was called the National Capital Commission, and they have a huge display building and a lot of interesting pictorial information and written information um, on the edge of the lake now. It's on the um, um, the Duntroon defence side of the lake there. Um, I can't, I haven't got a map in front of me to remember oh, and to tell you exactly where it is. <laughs> but okay. I will put it in the comments when I've looked it up. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Alex, I've just Thanks, sent out a story. In case you'd like to get on and, and tell us about the Noel Butler archives, um, so we'll just see. Otherwise, she might tell us a little bit more in the comments, or we can all go and look for the Noel Butler archives. Uh, here we. Oh, she's also saying something about the National Film and Sound Archives are absolutely wonderful. When she requested material from them last year, you have to pay for it, but it was very reasonable and very quick service. Okay, back to Lou Rees. If you've got someone in your um, family who was an author or an illustrator or a publisher, um, you may find that the Lou Rees archives. I think it's the University of Canberra. Um, Canberra. Yes, University of Canberra. Um, you can look them up on the web. You may find information on your Australian author, illustrator, or publisher there. So that's another place that um, might be handy to visit. Um, who have we? Fran, you haven't done. You haven't been to um, there, so you. Are looking for suggestions, not, I imagine. Not, not an archive, but the time that we did go to Canberra, we went to the old Parliament House. Oh, yeah. And I would, I would recommend any Australian that hasn't been to go there because, to me, when we end, went into the Prime Minister's office and you imagined Hawk sitting there, lording it over everybody, it was just such an eye opener. So it's not. It's part of the heritage and the history, and I, if you don't go yeah. that often, that's where I would go. And they have wonderful displays too, changing displays, which are, you know, I went once and they had a great cartoons display, um, yeah. political cartoons. So, so it's it's really worthwhile. It just depends how long you've allowed yourself in Canberra. You really need um, a fair bit of time. And of course, if you haven't visited. Um, Parliament, new Parliament House. I know we're going there for the dinner, but if you've got time, for heaven's sake, go and do a tour, uh, one of the guided tours of new Parliament House. It's it's just mm. beautiful and uh, really worthwhile because I, I know not everyone's going to the conference dinner. Um, and, and, and I think you should see it if you haven't. Um, all right. Now, Pauline is way ahead of us. Um, I don't know if Jenny's done this. Carmel's probably a bit organised, but he's putting Pauline on the spot again. Um, Pauline, I've registered for the um, Interest Conference Congress Interests Register, but I know you've actually put some interests in. So can you tell me? I've signed up and I've got my username and password. Can you talk us through that? Okay. Well, I didn't think it was Please. all that complex, Jill. Um, well, I just haven't I have done it yet. <laughs> I have to acknowledge Judy Webster because I had actually forgotten it until Judy reminded me, so that's a big plus for Judy Webster. Um, I just put 
I put in all my key names, um, but I also put in my regional names. So kind of my one place studies: Dorf, Fritzelton, which you're sick of hearing about, and East Clare and Murphy's Creek. So I was using it not just for names, but for the people who the places I'm interested in as well, which is why I thought you could add your, um, you know, f um, genealogical programs to that interest list. I imagine okay, if you want. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I hadn't. Um, I haven't looked at it, but I'm going to use it for um, my one name study. I'm going to put my surname in, and probably some generous people out there, generous genies, um, will have uh, some curries in their trees, some Australian curries that they can share with me. Hello, Alex. How Hello. are you? Now, really you're going to Congress. I am. It's you very am. Exciting. <laughs> have I put you on the blogger beads list? Possibly not, because it was a last-minute decision. Oh, um, I'm so glad. Yes. So tell us, uh, the other people have told us, tell us what capacity you're going to Congress in. Are you a first-timer? Are you a presenter? Or, uh, what do you, and what do you hope to get out of it? Well, this will be my second time, I think, because I'm a bit like everybody else that I've been listening about. I think the first time I went was pre-children. So we're talking 23 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in Launceston in Tasmania and I went down with the Queensland Family History Society and stood behind the bookshop stand and then dashed out to various sessions. So it's been a long, long time and I'm really looking forward to it. So you're going to be a participant? Yes, absolutely, as an individual, but very excited and, and hoping that I might be able to catch an extra day and go to the War Memorial and check out the exhibition because I'm doing a lot of work at the moment on commemorating World War I centenary at my workplace. So workplace. It, it would be lovely to see what other and libraries and museums are doing. Now, we're going to just jump to the Noel Butlin archives because I think you mentioned them. Have you visited there previously and can you tell us anything about them? Look, I haven't and they're located, I think, within the ANU. And the reason that I want to go and see them is um, when I did a family history course recently with the University of Tasmania, I was researching my grandfather and they hold records, union records, um, and also oh, that's of interesting yeah. business records as well. So I was interested to find out about the um, Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, but particularly he was a member of the um, Australian Engineers Society, I think, so I wanted to check membership records there and anything else they had. Now, they are marvellous. They, they respond very quickly to email inquiries and I asked them basically to provide me a list of the contents of various boxes that they had, which they replied virtually within 24, 48 hours. Unfortunately, they no longer offer a copying service. So you've got to find someone in Canberra to do the copying for you once you've found what it is that you want or to go in and look for you. Do you know what I mean? As an independent yes. researcher. So I, I may need to book more time to spend in Canberra, I think. But that's <laughs> a marvellous service. Yeah. That's, yeah, I, I knew I knew about the Noel Butlin archives, but it just had slipped me what you know it held. So, yeah, I remember now. Um, another thing, we all use social media, but there aren't some people who don't. And someone put a question on Twitter the other day. Oh, it was Carmel, wasn't it? Was it Carmel? Yes, it was. It was. It was it about was the hashtag. Hashtag. We had a big discussion. Um, several months ago when the official bloggers were appointed and you know we went back and forth with the AFO people and they are now, they decreed that the official hashtag for tweeting is hashtag AFFHO. That's it. Hashtag AFFHO. So if you're going to be tweeting and most of the people along this panel here um, do tweet. That's what you need to use. So that's a bit of a reminder. Um, we've got a couple of presenters on the bottom here on the panel and I'm going to ask them to succinctly tell us 
about their presentations, Jenny. Okay, um, I'm giving Elevator three talks. Pitch. Yes, <laughs> uh, the first, well, one of them is wills in England, Ireland and Wales, not Scotland. It's about why you should uh, look at them and what you might glean from them. Mm -hmm. Another talk is about the UK Gazettes, so that's the London Gazette, the Edinburgh Gazette and the Belfast Gazettes, uh, a very underrated um, resource that people only tend to look at for military honours but it's got a lot of other incredible value things even for Australian or colonial uh, people. And the third is the House of Commons Parliamentary Papers which I imagine very few people have ever looked at but again it's it can be a potential gold mine. It's incredible how many things the UK Parliament was interested in and therefore commission reports on. So those are my three talks. Fantastic. That's so good for pe people with uh, for most of us have got uh, ancestors from the UK I think. Pauline, how many are you doing? I'm doing two, Jill. One is called The Marriage of Family and Local History. So it's oh. about the resources that you can use to uh, explore the local history context for your family history and leading then ultimately almost to an, a one place study. And I'm going to mainly, fo well, I'm going to focus on the place. I'm interested in Murphy's Creek. Not because anyone else will care, but because it illustrates the points. Mm -hmm. The second point, the second talk is about blogging your one place study and how that can make a difference to making contacts with uh, other people from the same place and different strategies for exploring that research. So they're the And would two. that be focusing on Dorf Brazilton only because I can <laughs> say it? <laughs> well done, Jill. It's taken you a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, combination of Dorf Brazilton and East Clare, probably more East Clare actually to some extent, but okay. um, just a general. Perfect. And can I just hark back to the point um, yes. Alex was making about Noel Butlin? It reminded me, think about what theses are available in, in the um, uh, National no. uh, University, ANU, because, oh, okay. you know, one of the best investments of my time was spending a day and a half reading Richard's Reed thesis on Clare emig or Irish immigrants. So just, just have a look and see if something is of interest to you among theses. We've all got six months to spend in Canberra. <laughs> 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 now Fran, um, you did a blog post, so I'll come back to that because I can't remind made some positive comment. I can't remember exactly what was in your blog post. Could you go through that quickly for us? Yeah, it's really sure. Pertinent. Just need to squash it. I wrote it from a first timer point of view. So I covered what AFFHO and the HAGSOC means. Um, basically, a little bit about the Congress. And then the next best part, which I thought was the best part of the whole thing, was how to keep up to date. So, like, there's the weekly that Pauline does, check out on the tweets. And I don't know if you know, but Jill's actually got a page that's a summary of the tweets that are going through. Um, yeah, I've got a page on my blog. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, you don't have but to share a link. it. But, yeah. Yeah, but it's all there. It's already linked yeah. um, on my blog. And then I've got links to you official bloggers. And then the speaker profiles, the conference program, and there's a Facebook page as well, which hardly anybody writes any comments on. And then I just did a list of things that I basically find I end up looking up the whole time. So although I'm registered, I'm always going to the Where You Register page, um, the Research Interest Register, important dates, and if you haven't booked for the tickets for the welcome function and the Congress dinner, and you're wanting to, they close tomorrow. And oh. then I wrote a comment about research opportunities that you should be pre-preparing for. So that's a quick summary. It, yeah, I remember now, and it was it was it was a lovely summary. And it, so anyone who's going, uh, is it w w dot travelgenie dot com or blog dot travelgenie dot com? Just www.travelgenie.com. So genie spelt G E N E E, magic yeah, I, genie. It was it was a lovely list, you know, um, 
So mm -hmm. thank you for putting that together. I think we, you know, I tweeted it, didn't I? Um, yeah, no, you were good, Rich. Yep. Oh, no, you don't have to do that. Um, now, is there a standout speaker? Perhaps everyone who's with us um, can tell us about a speaker they are going to see or a speaker they've seen and they would suggest that others would benefit from. Um, who will we put on the spot? Alex, is there someone that you're keen to see or someone that you've seen who suggests others go and listen to? I know we're individuals and have different interests, but just sort of generally. Unmute. Your lovely new computer, we can't hear you. Oh, yeah. under, dive under the desk, that's the way. Uh, she's looking puzzled. We, we'll let her find her sound and we'll ask Carmel what she thinks. Is there someone you've heard previously, Carmel, or someone that you're really looking forward to seeing and why? Um, I've not no. heard any of these speakers at all. So I'm looking forward to every presentation and I'm hoping to learn a lot from all of you. And um, I'm, uh, I have chosen, but I don't have the program open in front of me That's to okay. do that. So I can't actually remember what I've booked to, do, to go okay. to. Yeah. Yeah. All right then. Um, I do Fran, think Joshua uh, Taylor will be interesting. Oh, Carmel, he's the loveliest young man. He can... Um, I did an interview with him at Roots Tech, just a very short one. But um, yeah, he's just lovely and he's so responsive. But, you know, I, I emailed the presenters in my panel um, the other day and Josh was the first one that came back to me and he's so busy and he came back with some wonderful points for discussion. So just just a lovely, generous um, young man and, and a very good speaker, yeah. Fran, how about you? Who Who or... Why or what? Um, well, I did what I often do with a conference. I highlighted all the things I wanted to go to and then a couple of weeks later I took a totally clean copy and highlighted them all again and then oh. had a look and see. And what you find is that you end up doubling up on a whole lot and they're obviously the ones that really interest you and then the ones that you sort of are deciding I use them as backups you know if I like with roots tech if I forget to get to somewhere at a time I've got extra backups yeah. so interesting thing is I actually marked most of Jenny's um, because I've actually found things in the UK Gazette and I've also found little snippets on the wills and probates but I need to take it further and the other one that I've marked quite a lot of is, and I don't know how to pronounce her name, but um, the S E O N A I D Lewis. You know, she was oh, on Shona. a Shona. Shona. Is that how you say it? The New Zealand yep. lady, because I yes. thought she, even if she goes off topic, there's surely something New Zealand I can find in it. So and she sounds her, her like topics, you. Yeah. Yes, and and she talks about fish and chops. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Jenny, yeah. apart from yourself, <laughs> what suggest, who are you hanging out to listen to or who do you suggest? I don't know if I'd say hanging out to listen to, but I strongly oh. recommend people to go to uh, Joshua Taylor, which has already been mentioned. Yep. He manages to give you this in great sense of enthusiasm whenever he talks and you go away empowered and enthused. And I'm personally wanting to try and corner him because he mentioned at his keynote at Roots Tech that he had discovered an Australian convict, William Heaps yes. from Lancashire, who I think I may be connected to by marriage. Oh, wow. So, oh, you know, it's you the AJJ could corner him. great family. Yeah. It'll be easier to corner him here than at Roots Tech, there, that's for sure. It. <laughs> All right. Indeed. Um, Les, you have chosen who you're going to see. Um, who are you really looking forward to because of your personal interests, etc.? What, what? Yep. I've actually got my list here in front of me of all the ones I'm going to see. So. Uh, yes. I, I wanted to do particularly a couple of um, the World War One speakers and yeah. military uh, sessions, and um, 
which I, I was meaning to uh, mention before, actually one of the reasons that I particularly want to go to the War Memorial is that I'm still a currently serving officer, so uh -huh. I have a really big interest in, in things military, in particular the Army. But I also wanted to see um, Carol Baxter. Um, having read the book, uh, The Peculiar Case of the Electric Constable, um, I really wanted to see her speak. I have seen a couple of webinars that she's done, and she sounds really, really good. She's been gracious. Um, uh, yeah. I also wanted to uh, see Kerry Farmer uh, do a couple of presentations Excellent. because she's she's one of my tutors on the course, so I'm uh -huh. very keen to see her speak in the face. And um, and also Carol Riley uh, doing a couple of hers. Mm. But um, I'm interested to hear that one. That previous gentleman that you mentioned was Simon Fowler, was it? Uh, yeah. No, Josh Taylor. But Josh Taylor, yeah. sorry. Yeah. He's a I'll keynote. Just make a... Yeah, but okay. Simon, Josh is a keynote anyway, and he's in the panel on the last day. Um, yeah. He's giving some other presentations as well. And, yeah. But and, Simon and Taylor, also, I think I've heard before, and he was quite good. Yeah. And yeah. the last one is uh, Colleen Fitzpatrick. Ah, oh, yes. Um, we were now, Colleen's actually. Colleen is coming to Brisbane, uh, I think, in April, giving a couple of presentations at uh, some uh, uh, venues here. So I'm very keen to have a talk. To, oh, sorry, to have a listen to what she has to say as well. Yeah, she was out in, uh, at the last yeah. congress, and she was excellent. Yeah. And she's also she's doing a tour because she's uh, going to a couple of venues in Sydney as well. Um, yeah. All right, Pauline. Uh, who, who are well, you hanging out to listen to, Richard Reed or...? Of course, with my yes. Claire interest, Richard Reed, Perry McIntyre and Cheryl Mangan. They, they, have, they have to be near the top of my list. I've heard Richard only once or twice, but we have very synchronous interests, um, and Perry as well. I've never heard Cheryl speak, but I know very much about her um, famine orphan interests. So they're both, all three are on my top list. And Carol Baxter, who I've never heard, and <coughs> Colleen Fitzpatrick. So they're probably at the top of my list. And obviously, there's lots of others that are of interest. But um, for me, it's about hearing people that I can't normally hear or haven't heard that. before, to some extent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I think the the benefit and we only have been at this conference once every three years, is that we we get to hear the overseas uh, speakers and speakers from way out of our state that don't uh, aren't on the regular speaking circuit. Uh, so so that that's really yeah, really good to have that opportunity. I remember David Holman at the last um, congress, and uh, as well as giving. Um, a serious talk. He gave a quite a light-hearted talk, and he was so so good. Did, were you there, Jenny, for David Holman? No. Do you remember him? No. no. Oh, oh, he's well. excellent. Oh, hang on. No, 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 no. I no. don't think I know. Yeah, and uh, of course, there's David Wrencher from Family Search, so he's one of the uh, top guys. I tried to grab him at Roostech, but didn't have a hope. Um, He's one of the top guys from Family Search, so he'll actually be able to give us all the clues. Um, he really got his finger on the pulse, whereas the people that came from Family Search last time were, you know, a few rungs down the ladder, I think, and and they didn't have quite the latest news. But I'm quite sure David Rincher will have. So uh, it's really good to um, be able to access those uh, out of Australia speakers. Well, I'm just wondering if there's anything else. Pauline is my co-official blogger. Um, is there anything I haven't brought up that was on my little list? I shall go to my little list. Reminders of speaker bios. Um, oh, so I was going to remind you of the interviews that Pauline Shauna and I did um, with the official speaker. We're well, not the official speakers, with the presenters. Because if you're not sure um, who you want to listen to, go and read a little bit about their background and that just might um, help you make up your mind. So Pauline, what else is there that I've forgotten? I think... No, nothing? I was hoping that we'd have a local on um, on deck that could 
you mm. know, give us some advice on, you know, cheap and cheerful eating places or watering holes. But um, we're all camera there's visitors. A very, there's a very nice yep. chocolate shop very close to um, <laughs> the shopping centre because so... Well, from my geography, if you're in Civic, the main shopping centre is quite close to the conference venue. Yeah. And coming from the opposite side to the the um, shopping centre is a very nice hot chocolate shop. So if you want a, oh. <laughs> a very uh, weight-inducing hot chocolate, that's where you roll. <laughs> that's where you roll. Um, I know there's... Uh, <laughs> yep, go on, Jenny. I was going to say, I can recommend the King, King O'Malley's Irish Pub. Oh, um, good. Okay, after then. the last time I was down there, my husband and I went there. Uh, good food and uh, there was some Irish band just, they weren't officially playing, but they were just doing their little rehearsal, so we kept getting snippets of it and it was absolutely wonderful. wonderful. As I say, good food too, which is important. Yeah. Um, there is, I can't remember the name of the club. Who Jenny, you were in Canberra for the conference last year or the year before yeah. whenever we were there. What was the name of the club? Because they actually have a branch in right downtown we, in Civic. We, we were down at it's the Hellenic free, Club. Hellenic Club. Hellenic. So Hellenic, Hellenic Club, as well as being out there wherever we were in the in the burbs, has a, Woden. a, has a branch right in Civic um, where you can you know, take out a temporary membership or whatever and get reasonably priced food and um, so that's another thought. Carmel, have you, it, it's a long time since you are in Canberra, isn't it? Yes, it is. We left there at the end uh, March 97, so yeah. I haven't lived there yeah. since then. So, <laughs> did, 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 no good that's stuff history. Then, but it's probably not the same. <laughs> oh, well, Do we can... If, Let's share on social media if we find yes. somewhere really good. Um, I shall ask my daughter who's lived there until three years ago when she went to Kenya. She was there five or six years and six I'll ask years. and she worked in Civic very close to where we're going to be. Going. So I'll yeah, ask so her good. if there's anywhere close that's good food and believe me, she likes good food. She likes food. Well, May not be cheap, but it'll be good food. So I'll oh. ask her and I'll put it I'll put it on this link for you. Yeah, lovely. I just haven't looked. I just need to look and see if we've got any more comments. Oh, Roger Moffat uh, tried to get in. Um, sorry, Roger. Um, all the way from Canada. But we've got no other new... Not Canada, from um, the UK. No, he's from... <sighs> Illinois. Michigan. No, he's across the border. Michigan. Michigan. Sorry, I should just forget it. Um, I hope that we've been of some help <laughs> to people who are going to Congress for the first time, the second time or the hundredth time. Um, so thank you everyone on the panel who joined in. We might give you one, if you've got like a 20 second thing to say as you farewell everyone out there in Hangout Land. Alex, have you got any comment at all? Pertinent. Oh. Just that I think Canberra is a very friendly city and it's a. I love it more and more every time I go back. I grew up there and oh. um, I think it's very visitor friendly and you'll have, if you have any hesitation about going, don't. You'll have a fantastic time. There's and you can there still and register. Wish you'd booked longer. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. I was at a meeting at SAG today where people there still, you know, umming and ahhing and a few of us over lunch that were going, I think, twisted some arms. So that's good to hear. Carmel, yes. your 10 seconds or 20 seconds of fame. I look forward to meeting all of you. Great. Nice. And we're lucky because we've got friends already. Fran. Oh, I don't know if you guys know if you did the Tasmanian University intro to family history. The Facebook group have organised some function to have on the Sunday night, um, which if any of you happen to go to it or anybody that's actually listening to this or, oh, okay. or tomorrow or the next day, it's Good. on, well, on their Facebook page. All right, we've got the genealogists for families um, function on the Sunday as well, I think at five o'clock. So that's another one to look out for. Jenny, final words of wisdom. Uh, just have fun.
Jordan, and I look forward to meeting you all there or catching up with you all there. Fantastic, Les. First timer. Um, I'm really looking forward to having some face time with all of you and uh, I've enjoyed your company over the, the last few months and uh, period that we've uh, been doing these hangers and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And can I just say hello to Alex because I, I know, although Alex hasn't met me, um, I've given some presentations in the other library uh, in her shire. So. Hello, Alex. <laughs> See, and when, when we get you. down there, we're friends already, even though we've never met, because we have exactly. this, this exactly. connection. And Pauline. Have fun, fun, make new mates, and enjoy the company of your old mates, who we know from uh, social media. That's it from That's me. It. It's a wrap. That's it from me. And from me, I think the next Hangout I'm going to try to do will be from Canberra. Um, the organisers may have forgotten, but they did mention that they might make a room available where we can do some interviews and hangouty type things. So if they have remembered that they were going to make a small room available, I'm willing to give it a go. And if I can get some of you to come in and be interviewed, that'd be even better. The interview, the interviews won't be of the uh, quality of um, those routines when we had a professional studio, but. We'll give it a go. So until Canberra, that's all folks.